Mm -hmm. Dr. Lane, why don't you start? We're in mm -hmm. the, the home of the Tigers. That's Te right. Texas That's right. Southern. Home of TSU Tigers, first and foremost, thanks to all of you for uh, being here. And as we usually say to, to visitors or folks, uh, our alums and students, welcome home. If you've never been here, we have a beautiful campus. Hopefully you get a chance after this to take a nice stroll. Uh, you know, we are just honored. Uh, as you know, and, and most of you have already uh, been um, broadcasting this event, uh, but the ABC partnership and connection for us is, is just a phenomenal uh, partnership. Uh, we're excited for our students, most importantly, because they get an opportunity uh, throughout this particular partnership with ABC uh, to do internships, uh, to be runners, uh, to conduct spin rooms, uh, pre and post spin rooms and so as you can imagine for our students in the School of Communications, our students in the Barbara Jordan Mickey Leland School of Public Affairs, uh, our business students are going to get some first real hand experiences uh, with ABC and with other affiliates obviously in the area both local, state, national, international uh, where they will be able to learn some pretty valuable uh, skills as they move forward. So. We're excited. Uh, we're, we're so excited to be in the best city in the, in the world uh, and to have the best mayor uh, right beside me at this particular conference. It means a lot. Uh, the mayor is a good friend of mine and uh, has always been supportive of me uh, during my role here as president of Texas Southern University. And so uh, we're just glad that we're able to bring yet another uh, uh, significant event to the city of Houston. Thank you, Dr. Lane, and let me tell you, it is a significant event. Congratulations to, uh, to Texas you, Southern Appreciate University, it. man. Congratulations. Thank you. This will be the third uh, Democratic presidential debate, uh, which is a, which is a, which is a huge deal. Uh, it's a, it's a huge win uh, for the city of Houston, and it's just a, a tremendous um, uh, statement that is being uh, hosted and held right here on the campus of Texas Southern University. That speaks to the quality of the university, its ability to host major events. And uh, in this facility on Texas Southern campus, what more than 7,000 people will be able to come into it right. and attend. And I can tell you just based on the calls that I've received as of yesterday, uh, that there are many who want to <laughs> attend. Because there's, uh, so, but let me just say what it does for the city of Houston. Um, Millions of social media impressions uh, will be going out uh, with us hosting this event. We are not hosting the Democratic National Convention, but I will tell you, just the fact that we went after, at the, um, after the Democratic National Convention, that we were competitive, uh, that the Site Selection Committee wanted to come uh, to the city of Houston, uh, and that the, the national profile of the city was significantly enhanced and raised uh, put us in an excellent spot uh, to be hosting this convention, uh, I mean this, uh, this uh, uh, presidential debate. I will say to you that uh, Tom Perez, the chairman of the uh, Democratic National Committee, um, called me about two or three months ago just to let me know that uh, more likely it was coming Houston's way. Told me to keep a secret. I can keep secrets. And, uh, but didn't tell me where it was going to be hosted in the city of Houston. And then when the an uh, announcement came out and Dr. Lane touched base with me and said, look, we are going to be hosting uh, the presidential debate, uh, I could not be more happy, more happy for the institution, for the students, the faculty. Um, it's, just, it's just making a tremendous statement. But it's coming to the city of Houston, there will be
In playing host at Decision 2020 this week, the third Democratic presidential debate will be held at Texas Southern University on Thursday. As our Taisha Walker reports here, it is just putting historically black colleges back in the national spotlight. A lot of eyes will be drawn to what will be taking place inside of HPE Arena on Thursday. For Texas Southern University, having the event here is historic. It's the first time the top 10 Democratic candidates will go head to head on one stage. Texas Southern University will also be in the national spotlight this Thursday as more than 4,000 invited people fill HPE Arena for the third 2020 Democratic debate. Some people think of TSU as the, the best kept secret, um, but this is a chance for us to showcase all the different talents that exist here. <laughs> Students at this historically black college say they want to hear the candidates touch on issues impacting them and their communities. Immigration and gun control, um, student loan forgiveness, those are all really important things that I'm looking forward to in this next debate. At this point, I'm more uh, policies, not candidates, not parties, but like I stated, gun reforms, health care is another major one. With so much interest in the debates on campus, the 650 free student tickets for the event sold out in 20 minutes. I think we'll see a lot of fallout after this debate in terms of the narrowing of that field. But I think it's significant to see how the issues intersect with the population in this community. Some TSU debate team students say they hope the candidates will use part of their time on stage to resonate with millennials and black voters. We need politicians and political officials to recognize the significance that black people hold and the power that we hold. Since NBC News is not hosting this debate, our cameras were not allowed inside to see the progress taking place inside of the arena. But we can tell you that TSU plans to host a watch party on Thursday open to the public, students, and staff members as long as they secure a ticket. From TSU, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Texas Southern University hosts the third Democratic presidential primary debate. The top 10 candidates will square off on national TV, bringing TSU tons of attention. Jason Miles spoke with folks on campus about the impact. Officials here at TSU tell me the network televising Thursday night's debate contacted them about hosting, and there was no debate about doing it. It's almost time for TSU to be in the national spotlight again when this arena built for basketball hosts the third Democratic presidential primary debate. I think it is a big deal. It's like good publicity for the college and like more exposure because I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. The debate comes a few months after Texas Southern hosted a nationally televised political forum focused on issues important to minority women. It's part of the reason officials believe the network broadcasting Thursday night's event came calling. It's certainly a, a, a big endeavor. It's one of the biggest events that the university has, has hosted. KHOU political analyst Bob Stein says TSU is tailor-made for the 10 candidates participating in this latest debate. The idea that as much as 25 to 30 percent of the Democratic primary vote in Texas on Super Tuesday, March 7th, will be African-American probably explains why TSU is beginning to get a lot of attention. Several of the Democratic candidates have also promised billions of additional dollars for historically black colleges and universities or HBCUs, of which TSU is the nation's second largest, in case you didn't know. I am a senior here and a political science major. Alexandria Barnabé is also on TSU's award-winning debate team. Okay, so you should be good to go. Just make sure you have your ID. And says debate fever has already prompted things like this voter registration drive. It's going to encourage a lot of people, not only at Texas Southern, to vote, but in the third ward community as a whole. It's going to get everybody really involved, which I'm really excited about. The debate is not expected to provide a major economic boost but it's difficult to put a price on all of the attention. About a thousand tickets were made available to students, faculty and staff for the debate, and I'm told all were reserved within about 20 minutes. The party and campaigns get a lot of tickets, and right now, none are available for the general public. Reporting from TSU, Jason Miles, KHOU 11 News. Yeah, I'll tell you who's happy about this, the director of admissions. <laughs> you know they are. Great publicity for uh, the university. Here's the Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of our national anthem, performed by TSU student Brianna Lindsay.
can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh the the back of the debate hall you can see there's still a lot of work to do over these next few days but they have been working hard for the last three weeks and they will be ready on time now part of the work being done by interns from TSU the administration when they accepted the debate here was really adamant that they wanted students to have the opportunity to work with ABC and get some learning opportunities outside of the classroom Merritt Johnson is having a busy fall semester. It's class and work, class and work. That's all it's been for the past three weeks. She's among the two dozen students who've earned internships with ABC in the weeks leading up to the debate and then on debate night. It's an incredible learning experience, especially in logistics and teamwork. We see a lot of behind the scenes uh, practices to putting on such a large event like this. The debate is Thursday. The final preparations are underway. The campus is brimming with electricity. Merritt Johnson can hardly contain herself. I'm just honestly astounded because I didn't think so much went into putting on um, a production of this magnitude. For the debate to be held here at the school to provide opportunities for uh, African American students at a historically black college, that means the world. Now, in addition to those interns who get the opportunity to work with ABC for the better part of a month, 650 TSU students will be inside the debate hall getting to watch that debate firsthand, and then another 1,700 have an opportunity at the school's official watch party on the other side of campus. So it's truly an interactive experience for those here at TSU. Joined now uh, by the president of Texas Southern University, Dr. Austin Lane. Thanks for having us uh, for here on campus. Here. Thank you so much for being here and, and hope you're having a good stay here in Texas and most importantly at TSU. It, you Absolutely. guys have been so hospitable. You know, I want to ask you, start by asking yeah. you about what I heard from so many of your students about mm -hmm. the importance of these types of schools uh, right now. I heard the word refuge mm -hmm. a lot. Does yeah. that surprise you? Uh, not at all. You know, we do a really good job in making sure our students feel at home. Like most HBCUs, you'll hear students like you heard on the piece just now that are really connected. Uh, they feel appreciated. They feel like they have a voice. Uh, and they really uh, excel when they get here and go off to do great things. And so we're just excited that they get the opportunity to be here with ABC and to be in the mix and, and to really learn from the professionals like you. 
Yeah, what do you think they're going to feel when they walk through these doors and see their oh. their stage, their <laughs> well, campus transformed? A few of them have already said, when you leave, we need to bring it back and have it for commencement. <laughs> I said, that's not going to happen. Just leave it So up. don't get spoiled. That's right. This is fantastic. When I came in yesterday, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it was still our gym and our AD, he and I joked, we said, we got a lot of work to do uh, to make sure that we spruce it up a little bit once you, once you leave. I ask you, uh, you know, about the financial struggles mm -hmm. that a lot of schools, maybe not TSU, have experienced HBCUs in the past decade or so. Mm -hmm. How important is federal funding uh, to keeping these schools sustainable? F over $500 yeah. million, dollars, I understand, That's a right. year in the yes. federal budget for HBCUs. Extremely important. We just got back this week from the National Conference for HBCUs in D.C. Uh, the agenda, at least that I went up with, is how do we pull down more federal dollars from those departments? whether it's Department of Education, Defense, Transportation, you name it. And so how do we receive more of those dollars, those federal dollars in research and, and grants? And so that's our agenda. A lot of HBCUs have not been that successful in doing that. We, we have probably more than some others, but there's still more work to do. And a lot of the candidates we may hear tonight, given uh, where, where we are, have floated some pretty bold yes. plans of funding <laughs> right. for HBCUs. Yeah. Pete Buttigieg uh, talking about $25 billion. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren, $50 billion. Mm -hmm. What do you think of, uh, of those numbers when you hear them? Is that yeah. realistic? You know, I usually focus on the money and not the message. And, and then most importantly, the action. And so a lot, I know now it's a lot of talk about, you know, what they'd like to do. And that sounds great, but we need that to translate into real dollars for our institutions. And so I, I typically don't get too excited when I hear that. Yes. And I try to pause out a little bit and just make sure that they really understand the need that exists for HBCUs and most importantly, Texas Southern. What else are you hoping to see on this stage tonight? You know, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, really see some, some real good dialogue between the, the candidates and that, that they really understand the issues that impact our students most importantly and then our community. Uh, not only here in Houston, but across the country, across the world. And so I'm hoping to really see that. We have to be nonpartisan, so I have to sit back and not get too excited or, you know, leaning left or right. But I am excited that it is here, and, and uh, this venue is just phenomenal to have that kind of discussion. We've, we've heard so much from the students the past few days, uh, Dr. Lane, about issues important to them, and we'll hear some more uh, yeah. after this conversation. Uh, Health care, immigration, gun reform, uh, gun right. safety control, very important to them. Also, a lot of conversation, as we just heard, about the rise of white supremacy in yeah. this country mm -hmm. right now, sure. racism, uh, minority communities feeling under pressure and really mm -hmm. looking to a new leader yeah. to help us out of that. What, what do you make of the, of the climate right now uh, when it comes to race in this country? And what do you think we need? Well, you know, I think we need um, some understanding uh, and I think we need some empathy. Uh, on both sides. And I think uh, we need to have the ability to work together uh, and do it in a way that's going to benefit um, our communities and, and our state and our, our, our world. Uh, and for our students to have this kind of experience, to hear it up close and personal and hear really a couple of sides uh, is very important as they go off to, to become who they're going to become. And they can help that uh, change. They can help change the world. Dr. Lane, we'll see you tonight. Thanks yeah, for having us here. Yeah, Thank so you all very much. Thank you so much for coming on. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. You heard right. that. Devin, um, one thing that I find so interesting, you've been here, but you've been working hard because you've been talking to everyone in the city, it feels like, and <laughs> specifically uh, the students that go to this campus. I have been talking to so many of the incredible students at Texas Southern University. They are proud not only for the spotlight that is on their school, uh, but for what it's doing to highlight the importance of historically black colleges and universities in this country, those schools which have been vital to educating and uplifting so many generations of African Americans have been struggling uh, the past uh, decade or so financially uh, and otherwise. But the students I talked to here said now more than ever, these HBCUs are important and relevant. As a saying at HBCUs, we have our entire life to be the minority. Here we actually get to be a majority and be represented, so it was really important to me. Both of my parents went to historically black colleges. Most of my family has gone to HBCUs, and so it was really important to me to also continue that legacy of going to a historically black college. Kira, is there something you get here that you don't get at 
Texas State. Definitely, and I think my story is different from all four of them here is I, from California, we don't have any HBCUs. Um, none of my family has been to an HBCU. I'm actually the first person to go to HBCUs. The nurturing spirit that you get here from faculty all the way down is something that you will not get at any other institution, in my opinion. Would you be surprised that since Donald Trump became president, there's been actually an uptick of students enrolling at HBCUs? A lot of people say maybe no accident. I'm not surprised by it at all. Uh, with so many uh, racial like tensions rising and it's that of that nature. I think students want to feel safe. So, of course, students are going to want to enroll in an institution where they don't feel like they have to fight for a safe space. Do you feel like when it comes to racism and discrimination in your life experience, do you feel like it's getting worse? I think it's been more blatant these days. I feel like racism is going to always be something that we have to deal with because you can't change the way somebody thinks. We have dealt with these issues. Uh, they've been pressing us. They have oppressed us, we will continue to be oppressed because there hasn't been enough change for me to say that it's getting worse, but I can say that it hasn't gotten better. So safe to say you guys are all Democratic primary voters? I am more <laughs> liberal. I am more policy-based. One of my biggest things is gun control. So I'm looking at a candidate that will push strong gun policies, not more a party that's going to push an agenda. And that's an issue that a lot of individuals get wrong in our current political atmosphere. There are more party affiliation than policy affiliation. He speaks for all of us there. Especially in the wake of two mass shootings yes. last month in this state, a lot of people talking about gun control. What else is important to you guys? My main uh, issue is the criminalization of poverty and how we're seeing a shift in the the country's dependency on the prison system is really is really um, a key issue to me because I want to see a candidate that can try to push away from that. Kira, what are you hoping to hear? Some big things and key things that I'm really hoping to hear from people um, are we talking about um, funding for colleges and those type of things, but also like healthcare is not something that we take serious enough. And I, so I think that's definitely something I want to hear from candidates and their policies moving forward. Dr. Raquel Brown Burton, good yes. to see you. So Thank you. what does it mean to have this debate on this campus and HBCU? How, how significant? extremely significant because a lot of people don't even know historically black colleges and universities exist. They don't understand or know the mission of our institutions and why they are even still relevant today. Some may argue that they are not needed or that they are not relevant, but I would strongly disagree. Yeah, we, we just heard the students talk right. about this is a place of refuge. It is. At it a is. time of a lot of racial tension. It is. It is. And it, it hasn't just been that way. It's been for me personally. I don't think I would be here today if it weren't for the experiences and the exposure. You attended two, you've taught at three. What right. is it about HBCUs that you're so passionate about? It's a way for me to give back to the community, to the young people, because when I was a student, I had, I wasn't sure of what I wanted to do. My ideas were limited, but by being in an environment where you were being exposed, great opportunities uh, that sometimes students of color don't receive unless they are at an HBCU. So really a neat opportunity, Kimberly, to spotlight uh, these, uh, these incredible schools, uh, more than 100 of them still in the country right now, founded uh, back in the 40s.